Our next speaker is uh, Chris Kang, and he'll be speaking about towards associative memory in convolutional neural networks for in silico neurodegenerative diseases. Thank you. Okay. Uh, hello, my name is Chris, um, and I'll be discussing our research on brain inspired modeling of neural networks. Uh, our talk is called Towards Assessive Memory in Convolutional Neural Networks for in silico neurodegenerative diseases. And. Uh, We have no disclosures. Okay, I'd like to start out with a small motivating scenario. Um, consider a patient who has recently noticed problems with memory, such as forgetting names, events, or appointments. A healthcare provider may suggest a cognitive screening, such as a mitral cognitive assessment. Here, the patient is asked to name images of three animals that are shown in front. In the first case, the patient can't quite recall the name of the animal. However, the patient can, well, the patient manages to explain the context. For example, this is a beast that lives in the desert. Clinically, this may indicate a semantic memory impairment. And in the second case, the patient can neither correctly identify the image nor offer contextual description of the animal. In this case, it may indicate impairment in semantic memory as well as in visual perception such as in uh, moderate to severe Alzheimer's or Parkinson's disease uh, dementia. In the final case, a patient can neither accurately name the animal or offer contextual description. However, the answer to give is semantically somewhat similar to the image. This could be a problem of both visual perception and association and anything ranging in between. Such ambiguity uh, makes it difficult to assess the degree of impairment and to localize uh, the cause from a cognitive assessment alone. So uh, this is where the in silico modeling comes in. Uh, in recent years, the emergence of the interaction, uh, intersection of neuroscience and AI has opened, opened new ways of understanding the brain. Uh, and in our previous work, we have utilized similarities between uh, the human brain and artificial neural networks to develop a brain-like and silico modeling approach that can aid in simulating dementia. However, while achieving promising results, the ANNs have shown some important differences compared to the human visual system. So the neural network we propose uh, addresses some of the deficits of the previous work, which adheres to the basic principles of vision and uh, learning, and that is perception, encoding, and memory recall. And uh, in order to do that, first we established a modern hopfield network as an auto-assistive memory in a convolutional neural network to develop a visual cognition model. And second, we applied this framework to develop a brain decoding pipeline from fMRI signal patterns using the generic object decoding data set. And so in short, what we're aiming to do is to develop a robust neural network that captures high-level cognitive functions, which can be an ideal model, model for simulating dementia through injury mechanisms. The general structure of our proposed model is quite simple. Uh, on the left is the anatomical connections between cortical regions of the brain, extended to hippocampal formation where memory association and recall take place. And on the right is an analogous neural network which follows the hierarchical nature of visual processing, uh, but it starts with convolutional layers which resembles regions in the visual cortex, and it goes all the way to the Hockville network, which acts as an auto-assistive mechanism of hippocampal formation. But how and why would such an architecture setup of modern Hockville network be useful for a computer vision task? Well, a Hockville network creates attractors, uh, which rep represent stable states the network uh, can settle into. Effectively, these act as stored patterns or memories. Here on the right is an energy landscape where the basins of traction represent stored memories of images of a football and medical devices denoted as C1 and C2. The network associates the stored memories with states or partial cues, a process known as pattern completion. And in the core of the Hockville network uh, is its energy function, which is grounded uh, in biologically well-supported heavy learning which is the mechanism behind how the network evolves towards these memories or stable states. And what is interesting about um, the Hoffield, modern Hoffman network is 
is that the, it can be rewritten as this self-attention self form uh, in the transformer that is uh, popularly used today. Um, thus, uh, a CNN equipped with a Hoffield network may look like this. With a given image, the convolutional layers serve as a feature extractor, and the feature embeddings are fed into the Hoffield network, which performs image association or memory recall. And the final layer uh, performs classification. The integration of modern Hoffman network has useful benefits from the computer vision standpoint. And uh, in this simple example involving classification of low resolution images from uh, where we trained this from scratch and uh, on inference, we tested on images injected with a uh, fair amount of noise. Uh, we were able to easily see that the model setup outperforms like the standard VGG19. And other groups have independently shown that equipping with the Hoffman, uh, modern Hoffman network variant to CNNs uh, makes it more robust to occluded images and also to adversarial inputs. Now, we have the necessary tools for uh, an interesting application of this framework. Our aim is to create a brain decoding pipeline that performs a computer vision task with fMRI data, which could serve as a toy model of visual cognition. The high-level pipeline begins with uh, ImageNet uh, dataset, which is a large number of high-resolution natural images with 1,000 object categories. And the image is pro uh, processed through a pre-trained VGG19. Uh, a very deep convolutional neural network to extract high-level feature embeddings. And concurrently, we utilize a pre-processed task fMRI data from the generic object decoding data set. And this was an experiment done by uh, Horikawa and Kamitani, where they recorded brain activities of five subjects who viewed ImageNet images in a block design format. So for all these subjects, we extract the features of stimulus samples correspond to predefined regions of interest. And we take this group level features back, feature back and transform them into the VGG19 feature space. And the embeddings from the transformation are then fed into the, uh, the modern Hoffman network where it performs a multiple instance learning for image class prediction. We analyze the performance of image classification through a qualitative measure of what I call overall semantic understanding of images. Uh, we first find the top five model predictions of image classes. And then we compute all possible pairs of wu palmer similarity scores, which measures uh, semantic, uh, semantic word distance between the uh, predictions, and we average them. So essentially, the score you get is how uh, is a measure of how semantically close the model predictions are with each other. And finally, we find the uh, distributions of the average scores to measure overall semantic understanding of a model. What you see in the first set of histograms is the performance of, uh, of the brain decoding model with just the VGG19 classifier for training and test images from the generic object decoding data set. And on the right is the same experiment with VGG19 equipped with modern Hoffman network. Qualitatively, the two sets of uh, distributions are somewhat similar, but clearly you can see that the average similarity scores of the hybrid model is more concentrated in the middle and consistent across the board. We can take these two uh, brain decoding models now and, and perform a slightly harder task, which is um, feeding them occluded images. And if you see, uh, look at the image on the left, uh, the middle part has been taken out, and I used something called GradCam to find uh, the most uh, highest gradient activation point to take out this part of the image. And once again, what we see from the two sets of distributions is that uh, the VGG19 modern Hoffman network outperforms the ba baseline model with greater mean and smoothness in the distribution, which suggests that the model pipeline with the Hoffman network enhances the model's semantic understanding, but also handles occluded images and perform pattern completion. So uh, in summary uh, of what we discussed today, we developed a uh, first step brain decoding pipeline, which serves as a visual cognition model. We first leveraged the strengths of both the modern Hoffman network for assisted memory and VGG19 for feature extraction. We used the generic object decoding data set to develop an fMRI informed pipeline for image classification. And 
And for our preliminary results, um, the model with the modern Huckle network produced more uh, more centered uh, wool published in the earlier distributions, which indicates improved semantic association pattern completion. And finally, for our ongoing and future work, we are uh, investigating previously established injury mechanisms to assess uh, the, the impact of in silico dementia in this framework. And I would like to acknowledge the following funding support and organizations, uh, and finally, our amazing lab. And I'll take any questions if you have any. Uh, Chris, we do have one question that's come through the app, so I'll ask okay. that first. Um, can the network that you have generate false memories as are common in humans? Uh, so are you talking about reconstruction of memories? Like, um, so there's no idea of like, f like counterfactual false memories in this case, because we're just, for this model pipeline alone, you're just doing image classification. You're just, obviously, you choose the right class or not. And um, I'm measuring the semantic understanding based on uh, these, the, the word distance, semantic word distance. However, something an interesting that I would love to try out is uh, maybe uh, play with like the generative property of the Huckle network, which is something that is, has been um, uh, been in development in other groups. Uh, they say that this modern Huckle network is actually a diffusion model as well. So it would be cool to come up with some kind of counterfactual memory uh, with, with this setup. Um, other questions from the audience? Um, up the back there, we might just get you to repeat the question once you've heard it. Please, please ask your question. So, um, uh, we have members of the lab who've tried uh, in published work, uh, they've come up with like an injury mechanism where you systematic, systematically prune uh, synapses of a convolutional neural network, or uh, systematically prune or get rid of like the neurons and see what how the classification uh, accuracy changes. Uh, so, in the same context, you can do something similar with this uh, VGG19 monohydro network pipeline. I think you can obviously prune some aspects of the convolutional neural network, and then also. Uh, play around with damaging the the Huffle network, uh, the, the waste themselves. So. Okay. Thank you very much, Chris. Okay.